In 1991, two men agreed to take part in the first human hibernation experiment conducted by a Nobel Prize winning scientist. Instead of being revived in 1994, they wake up in the year 2044. As they try to figure out what went wrong with the experiment, they find themselves trapped in a post-war period where only women are allowed to exist. A helicopter touches down in front of a large structure. A sleek black sedan drives out, from which a man in a wheelchair named Professor Victor Kupelweiser emerges. In the restroom, biologist Albert and risk-taker Max are washing their hands when the mirror cracks, catching them off guard. Albert believes the broken glass is a bad omen, contrary to Max's theory that it is the result of the building's internal pressure. Seconds later, the three gentlemen gather for a live TV press conference. Professor Victor, who successfully put a chimpanzee in hibernation for six months, is now conducting the first human hibernation experiment with the help of two brave volunteers, Albert and Max. The two gentlemen are expected to awaken three years later as heroes of the historic experiment. Albert, who is a responsible biologist, says that he is doing it out of a sense of duty. He thinks that hibernation will help sick people move to times when they can get better. This statement moves Albert's proud parents to tears while watching him at home. Meanwhile, Max's dissatisfied wife is holding a knife to the television as she listens to him say that he is doing it out of risk and interest. The abandoned wife is well aware that her husband is only participating for financial gain. She then consoles Yedwinia, their crying daughter, and tells her not to forget her selfish father. Following the press conference, the two volunteers are taken to the laboratory. Max hides his flask and cigarettes in the corner of his pod as they prepare for hibernation. Shortly after, the hibernation pod closes and slots into a hole in the wall. Many years later, Max and Albert wake up in an unfamiliar white room, where three women walk in to serve their meal. The two men are eager to begin eating, but Max notices that the croissant is stale. One of the women teaches him to eat it the right way, by turning it open and eating the content inside. The men don't enjoy the meal because they think they've lost their sense of taste. Max expresses a desire to smoke shortly after eating. He recalls the cigarette he snuck into his pod and offers Albert one. While the men smoke, a curious doctor Lamia Reno observes them from the surveillance room. When the doctor and her team discover that men are using something called a cigarette, they look it up, only to discover that it is an intoxicating stimulant from the past. Immediately after, two guards with shields spray foam on the men to put the cigarettes out. Later that day, Lamia enters to meet Albert and Max. The two volunteers expect to be praised as heroes for the experiment. But the blonde doctor says that there were more important things happening during the war. After being asked who won the war, Dr. Berna walks in to emphasize that it is not about the victors, but about the survivors. Confused, the two men demand to see Professor Victor, but the women tell them he doesn't exist. Despite this, Max doesn't give up hope and request for a male superior, but Dr. Berna informs him that males have gone extinct. Albert asks how long they've been sleeping, and the doctors reveal that they are in the year 2044, and they've been asleep for 53 years. The skeptical Albert thinks they're hallucinating, a side effect of the hibernation. The men try to leave the building, but are electrocuted when they touch the door. After recovery, Albert suspects it may be a second part of the experiment to test their psychological resilience. Meanwhile, Max wonders how reproduction occurs in a women-only world. Lamia, who is in the surveillance room, hears their conversation and tells them about artificial parthenogenesis, a reproductive method that doesn't require male contact. Moments later, genetics faction doctor, Dr. Tekla, unexpectedly visits Lamia in Archeo. The genetics member confronts the doctor, who is rumored to be working on a secret operation. Before leaving, Dr. Tekla suggests handing the two men over to their faction. The next morning, Albert wakes up to loud sounds. As Max searches for the source of the music, their small TV turns on, showing a child explaining artificial parthenogenesis. This enlightens Albert, who realizes that there are no men because only egg cells are used to create babies in test tubes. Later, Lamia informs Dr. Berna that genetics knows they dug up two hibernating men. She adds that the tests are going well, suggesting that men are the missing link between women and monkeys. However, Dr. Berna warns Lamia to keep her distance because she could revert to primitive thinking. After Dr. Berna leaves, Lamia watches and takes notes as the two trapped men try to create a secret language. Suddenly, her computer alerts her to take an ambition-boosting pill. Cold and alone that night, Max finds comfort in sleeping next to Albert. The sad biologist begins to grieve for their loved ones and the years they lost in hibernation. Max offers him a drink from his flask and reassures him that men can adapt to anything. 
The following day, while Albert remains in bed, Max watches the sporting events between Genetics and Arkeo. When Max observes the athletes taking their tops off, he gets the bright idea of using their situation to restore a world where men exist. Suddenly, Lamia walks in to assess the two men. When Max leans in to kiss her, she is astonished, advising him not to repeat the unhygienic act. Unfazed, he tries to kiss her again, but the upset doctor takes him down. After Lamia leaves the white room, she seems dazed due to the unfamiliar feeling she's experiencing caused by Max's flirtatious behavior. Upon entering her workstation, Lamia sees genetic security head Emma Dax. The officer demands that the doctor should follow her orders, but she refuses, as she only reports to Dr. Berna. However, Emma informs her that Dr. Berna has already agreed to take the two captive men to Her Excellency. Moments later, Lamia enters the white room and orders the guards to prepare the men for a trip. One guard punches tracking devices into the men's ears. When they get to Her Excellency's office, Albert and Max wait in the reception area. As they look around, they see stuffed radiation mutants on display. Then, they see an apple tree with two fruits hanging from it. They consume the apples, delighted they get to eat something other than the bland food in confinement. A few moments later, Her Excellency enters and formally introduces herself to the gentlemen. When asked their age, Emma explains that they are 86 years old, but due to their hibernation, their bodies remained 40. When Max tries to shake Her Excellency's hand to formally introduce himself, the protective guards restrain him, mistaking his action as an attack. The Supreme Leader is surprised but quickly orders to release him. After defending his friend's respectful gesture, Albert asks why there are no men. Her Excellency reveals that Professor Kupelweiser's M-bomb is to blame. It was designed to temporarily paralyze men's genes, but ended up erasing them all. After discovering the truth, Max attempts to offer the reproductive services in order to restore society. Her Excellency points to the sacred apple tree and notes that a man's decision to take the apple led to a loss of paradise. Suddenly, Her Excellency notices the missing sacred apples. After discovering that the two men consumed them, the furious leader sends them back to confinement. After they are thrown back to the white room, Max loses all hope, but Albert tries to cheer him up. When a vacuum cleaner robot enters the room, the two men are startled and cower to the corner. Suddenly, Albert's hand feels a bunch of wires along the wall, inspiring him to come up with an escape plan. Meanwhile, Lamia wakes up in her room, preoccupied with thoughts of Max's weird effect on her. To understand her uneasy feelings and learn more about men's roles in the past, she plans to visit the oldest living woman in the harbor of deserved retirement. When Lamia reaches Yulia Novak's retirement cell, she puts a blocker on the speaker so that the guards won't hear anything they discuss. After the doctor shows her footage of the men they exhumed, the 74-year-old woman excitedly remembers her own fiancé back in the day. Lamia shares that the men make her unfocused, which Julia interprets as being in love. The doctor shares her superior's plan to turn the men into women via naturalization. However, the old woman argues that men should be reintegrated into society. In the white room, Albert waits for the guard to open the door and then shorts the wire, disrupting the facility's electric network. In the darkness, they escape and hide in a hole in the wall, watching a class where women are brainwashed to think all men are evil. As they eavesdrop, the two men lean on the thin wall in front of them, eventually breaking it and falling into the classroom. The guards immediately take them back to the white room. Despite the men's reckless behavior, Dr. Berna, Emma, and Lamia visit them and offer a second chance. The blonde doctor hands them an application form for undergoing naturalization, but the men refuse to sign it. As the women leave the room, the ceiling opens to reveal an assembly. They're suddenly on trial, and the women will decide their fate. Dr. Tekla begins to testify and blames men for all of society's ills and vices, and then praises their superior men-free world. Albert argues that men have been important in history and mentions Copernicus and Einstein, only to be corrected that they are women. Later, he argues that women are held in high regard in their world because men adore and write poems about them. He believes that erasing men erases half of themselves as women. After the trial, Genetics wants to experiment on the men before getting rid of them, while Arkeo wants to turn them into women. While waiting for the verdict, Albert and Max plot their escape by stunning the guards with a kiss. Back at the assembly, Arkeo wins by a single vote in favor of their proposal for naturalization. However, the two men are able to escape. As they search for a door that will lead them outside, Albert and Max discover a mineshaft. Upon exploring the area, they find a boot that contains a bottle and a newspaper from 1993 detailing the outbreak of war. 
When the guards see them, they slide down the trash chute and end up in a place where decadents are singing and having fun. The rebels find Max and Albert and think they are government spies. Soon after, the security team finds them and attacks the decadents, causing total chaos. While the rebels and security are distracted, the men split up and escape. Later, Max finds a disgruntled Albert on the elevator, who is caught by Lamia. When Max asks Lamia what she'll do to them, she says she'll show them the outside world. He is skeptical, but Albert tells him to trust her. In Blockhouse C, Lamia lets the two men use the periscope to see a dark, uninhabitable wasteland outside. The doctor explains that the women live 365 meters below ground post-war. Max wonders if there is still a possibility to go outside, but she explains that it's dangerous to live there due to the 300 units of cupel visor radiation, which is a side effect of the M-bomb. Lamia tells them that their only hope to survive is to undergo naturalization. When Max still tries to find a safe way to get out, the blonde doctor reveals that there are special suits they can use, but the oxygen supply only lasts an hour. Max and Albert refuse to stay, and would rather die outside than live like moles with the women. Lamia says they'll adapt, but they refuse. Frustrated, she declares herself a loyal state official and informs security of their location, leading to the men's capture. After the fugitives are caught, Dr. Tekla and Emma enter Blockhouse C to congratulate and promote Lamia. She then advises Lamia to give Emma the fugitives' data, since she will be taking over her work. Lamia objects because she's writing a dissertation on the men, but Emma mocks her. Realizing that she won't be able to finish her paper, the doctor refuses her promotion. Before undergoing the procedure, Albert and Max are being examined by the surgeons. Albert says he'd rather die than be transformed into a woman. Dr. Tekla tells them their organs will be removed and given to older women to lengthen their lives. The rest of their bodies will be synthesized for nutrients, according to Dr. Yanda, the chief surgeon. While speaking to Dr. Yanda, Max is shocked to learn that she's Yadwinia, the daughter he abandoned in 1991 to participate in the experiment. He tries to reconcile with her, but his vengeful daughter shows him no mercy. Meanwhile, Lamia disguises as a surgeon to sabotage the operation and help the men escape. They run to the elevator, but Albert suddenly passes out from anesthesia. He wakes up in 1994, where the professor informs him that the experiment was a huge success. When Albert says he dreamed of a world without men, Max says he had a similar dream. Albert is intrigued by their coincidental dreaming, but the professor says it's impossible. After Dr. Lamia injects him, Albert wakes up and cries when he realizes that he was only dreaming. Lamia then takes off the tracking devices on the men's ears. She takes the men to Blockhouse C, where she threatens the guards to help them escape. After Albert and Max put on protective suits, the guards inform Lamia that they need an acoustic password to activate the capsule, but only Her Excellency knows it. A disappointed Max curses and utters an insulting phrase, which surprisingly activates the capsule, allowing them to climb a ladder to escape. Moments later, Lamia changes into a protective suit and follows the men. While exploring the wasteland, Max discovers a fabric barrier that he can't pass through. The curious escapee cuts through it with a knife and sees that it leads to a beach. They realize the women underground are being tricked into thinking there is an uninhabitable dark landscape above ground. After seeing the beach for the first time, Lamia thinks she's in outer space. Max grabs her as she frolics in the water, worried that it may be contaminated. The escapees find a forest but are nearly out of oxygen. As they struggle to breathe, Max removes his suit and rejoices when he sees a stork flying overhead. Soon, they find a warm home stocked with plenty of healthy food. They prepare a meal and decide to eat in the garden, where a nearly unconscious Emma finds them. Emma eventually passes out and Albert brings her inside the house. After waking up, Emma gets into an argument with Albert and they accidentally switch on the TV, where the channel shows Dr. Berna announcing Lamia and Emma's demise. Then, a fake Max and Albert are interviewed as successful patients of naturalization. While Albert calms Emma down, Max takes Lamia to the bedroom. Eventually, the two couples make love in separate parts of the house. While resting in the living room, Max and Albert quickly hide after hearing the sound of an arriving elevator. It turns out that Her Excellency is the homeowner. When she reaches the living room, she notices that someone has broken into her home. The Supreme Leader searches the wardrobe and finds Max, who jumps out and chases her. After restraining Her Excellency, the two men discover that she's actually a man disguised as a woman. Her Excellency recounts his survival story, admitting that he was four years old when the League of Women took over post-war. The surviving males were naturalized, but his mom hid him for safety. Growing up, he disguised as a girl and later joined the League, where he was elected as the leader. 
Albert notes that thousands of underground women don't know the radiation is gone. He says the radiation wasn't as strong as expected and that women are easier to control down there. When questioned as to why he didn't rebuild a society with men, Her Excellency admits that he is intimidated by women. Upon learning this, Max offers to keep a secret if he lets them live in his house, which he gladly accepts. Days later, Max and Albert return underground as disguised laboratory workers. In the parthenogenesis room, they put male genes into the test tubes. Months later, a nurse swaddling newborns recoils in horror at the sight of a baby boy. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.